Hello everyone, it's me, Clayton, and I just got back from seeing Despicable, Despicable Me 3. Now, if you know the Despicable Me movies, you probably all have an opinion on them. Whether you think they're overrated or underrated, or whether you think they're funny or not, they're certainly a big, big franchise in the, anima in, in the animation industry. And they're practically the films that put Illumination Entertainment on the map. Personally, I love the first two, and Minions was okay for what it was. Now, for the third movie, it introduces a new villain named Balthazar Bratt, played by Trey Parker, yes, from South Park, who has eluded, eluded capture from Gru and Lucy, causing both of our heroes, played by Steve Carell and Kristen Wiig, to lose their jobs. At the same time, Gru manages to meet his brother Drew, also played by Steve Carell, who wants him to return back to his villainous roots. That's essentially the story. There are several other subplots thrown throughout the movie, but that's the main story of the film. The story itself is pretty predictable for the most part, mainly because it hits familiar story beats for anyone who's seen this type of setup before, but it's the execution that manages to give the film its entertainment value. Because, let's face it, the Despicable Me films have pretty basic stories when it comes down to it, and it's more the entertainment factor that you get that's what makes the movies enjoyable. So do this film is very entertaining because of that. Steve Carell is, of course, at the top of his game as Drew and Gru. I mean, I like the little subtle differences between their voices. They both still have funny accents, but you can still tell the two apart. And uh, Gru's, in general, a hilarious character, and in my opinion, he's the best thing about the franchise. The minions are more fun in small doses, but when you give them a big movie to fill out, like, like minions, it feels like their humor starts to wear pretty thin. Here, their humor is used just enough to the point where they don't get annoying. Whenever the plot of the film needs to take a break, they do cut back to the minions doing their usual goofy antics. A lot of it's lowbrow humor, but then again, sometimes lowbrow humor works for these kinds of movies. Because at least it's fast paced enough to the point where you don't have to think too long about a joke. And as soon as one joke doesn't work, there's about three or four other jokes that will work. Now, as far, as far as the animation goes, Illumination is, of course, very well known for their high-speed comedic animation, and here it's no exception. There's a lot of detail in almost everything, from the character designs, the environments, to pretty much every single city they go to. And honestly, I think the animation works the best during the action scenes, mainly because its high speed and frenetic pace works together with the action perfectly. Um, the so and the soundtrack of the film is very 80s, just to, just to let you know. Mainly because Balthazar Bratt is a former 80s Hollywood actor who wants to take revenge on Hollywood for rejecting him. It's, uh, it's quite jarring, to say the least, to hear a lot of 80s pop songs in this film, but they, in my opinion, just adds to the film's frenetic and random humor. And Balthazar Brat is a pretty effective villain for what he is. He's pretty comedic, but at the same time, he poses a legitimate threat to our heroes. He just isn't used that well. He isn't used enough, in my opinion. And that's the problem I have with the film. All the component parts work for what they are, but since the film tries to cram a ton of subplots into the film, some things feel underdeveloped, like Balthazar Brat, the relationship between Gru and Drew. The little bits we get are good, but... It seems like the film's more focused on making the audience laugh rather than make the audience feel for everything. Granted, this is probably the funniest Despicable Me movie of the bunch, mainly because the jokes never stop at all, but that can also be a detriment to the film, mainly because the film doesn't have the same emotional heights that the first two Despicable Me movies had. Those films didn't make me laugh as much, but at the same time, I cared more for the characters and I cared more for their their plights in the first two movies. And here, the emotional moments are there, but they feel a little rushed. Probably just to fit that 90-minute uh, time limit that they seem to have imp imposed on themselves. But yeah, for the most part, the film is only somewhat successful with the emotional moments that feel rushed, whereas the comedy just keeps going with one joke after another. Some of them don't work, the majority of them do, but you can see where I'd be I would have a problem here. The last thing I'll mention is the ending. The ending of the film, without spoiling anything, does feel like it's trying to set up a sequel 
which considering we've already had three Despicable Me movies and a spinoff, it makes me wonder how long this franchise is going to go before people start getting sick of it. But if the films are as entertaining as this one, that's unlikely to happen in the near future. I gave Despicable Me 3 an 8 out of 10. See you next time.